Hi guys, so we recently got back from um, a six week trip back to England and it was Honor's first trip abroad, her first flight and I have been inundated with questions from you guys and advice that I'm gonna share um, on how to travel with a baby, flying with a baby, um, at jet lag with a baby, because that was a much bigger deal than we anticipated. So I'm going to give you um, all my tips, tricks, and hacks that I have learned, my favorite products, and things that have really made life easier traveling with Honor. Um, we are not, by no means experts, so I would still love more tips and ideas and links below in the comments section. And also let me know what other baby videos you would like me to do. I have one coming up on breastfeeding, and so you can watch that one too if you're thinking about doing it, doing it, or weaning, or whatever, supplementing. Um, so, this was an 11 hour flight from LA, and we actually booked the night flight back to England on purpose so that she would be sleepy, um, and that was a good idea. The way back from England is a day flight, and that was a completely different story. She didn't really want to nap, she was way overstimulated by everything. So, if you can get a night flight do, uh, try and get the bassinet seat right at the front, some airlines don't let you reserve that in advance, but you can put a request in for it and then at check-in they um, they give it to you. If it's a shorter flight um, or there's no bassinet at all, you can ask for an aisle seat because you will be up and down a lot. Um, stuff to take, okay. This, I can't remember who recommended this to me, but it was an absolute lifesaver. It's made in Australia, it's called Cozy Go, and it's basically a breathable roof for the bassinet. So not only does it keep all the light out, but it muffles a lot of the sounds, because especially when you're taking off and they're serving meals and bing bong and clattering, um, you can unzip the little window so you can still get to her, and it's just brilliant. It kind of pops up and clips on and it is approved by the airlines so they won't be able to say you can't use that. Um, in fact, all the air stewardesses were fascinated by it and thought it was amazing. Um, Sky Baby makes a baby mattress. I was a bit concerned that the bassinet might be a bit gross, to be really honest. I doubt those things get washed. So I bought this and it was kind of a good foam pad for Honor. I will say if your baby's five or six months or above, this will be too small. So this is kind of better for newborns um, up to, I'd say, five or six months. Um, but just use a muslin or something um, over the um, bassinet if you want to create your own kind of mattress cover. So that was that. Then, although it's lovely to imagine that your baby's going to be flying in cute little pretty dresses and things like that, it's far more practical just to put them in a onesie or their PJs. And a couple of my favourites, this is a Sapling, which is an Australian brand, organic cotton. I love the little rose print on there, very, very cute. And it's just easy and comfy for them to travel in. Um, you know, that you, your main goal is gonna be that they are sleeping and getting as much rest as possible. So changing clothes the whole time is a pain. Um, this is another brand I love called Clover. And um, I like this one because it's got the feet on and it's got little grippers, which, Honor is now trying to crawl a little bit, so that's quite good for that to help her do it. So always pack a few extra of those. And as Mackenzie cleverly remembered just before we were leaving, pack a few extra t-shirts for mum and dad too, because there will be spit up and other things that mean you kind of want to change clothes, possibly on an 11 hour flight. Um, we tried not to overpack for the flight, to be really honest. And that's, I think that's quite good advice. Like she's teething at the moment, so we had her favorite teether um, and really lightweight toys. She absolutely loves this little book and it kind of crinkles, but it's not pinging and making lots of noise to upset other passengers. Um, which is, brings me on to another point, other passengers. I don't know about you guys, but I had massive anxiety before we got on the plane, especially the night flight, because I was worried that people were gonna judge us and if she freaked out, you know, were we gonna get filthy looks? And it's quite interesting because I'm gonna be honest, before Honor was born, Mackenzie and I would see babies get on and on the plane and we would be like, please keep walking. Like, we hope that that baby's not next to us. Um, now the shoe's on the other foot, I feel really bad for ever thinking that because it's the most stressful thing as a parent, just worrying and, and trying to entertain your child. But we had 
a really good reception, apart from one woman who was sitting behind me um, out of LAX who gave me a really dirty look and that kind of, I just felt like fine. Um, but there was a man that came up who was next to us with, with his older children and his wife and he said, oh, she's gorgeous, how old is she? Don't worry, we'll all be fine. And that really set our mind at ease. Plus the, um, the stewardesses and stewards were so sweet at sort of giving her cute little toys and, and playing with her and stuff. So um, don't worry too much about what other people think because if you're doing your best to keep them quiet and happy, then that's all you can do. Um, I love this diaper bag. Um, I know before I had Honor, I just thought diaper bags were horrible and I was convinced I was just going to use a cute handbag. But the reality is, again, you actually need something with a million compartments. Um, you want to be able to wash it at a moment's notice. This one's from Rebecca Minkoff and it's still very chic and I love the fact that it's got like this in a pouch so if you only need I'll just take this with me to the loo especially on a plane you are scrambling in the tiniest um, airline loo to change them so I'll just take the diaper and the, and the wipes in there with me rather than the whole bag um, most diaper bags do come with a changing mat and these are great but I like to take the uh, disposable mats which I don't think in reality they're actually even supposed to be changing mats I think dry nights is the name of the one we use um, and they're supposed to go under the sheet in the crib but if a doctor friend of ours said use them you can cut them in half fold them up put them in your diaper bag um, and take those into the the loose with you because then you can just throw them away when you're done those um, pull down changing mats in the loose are not necessarily the cleanest so I don't really want to be putting this on it and then using it again and again because it's probably getting pretty filthy. So that's another one of my tips. Um, products to actually take on board. We did take Tylenol just in case she got sick, fever, um, anything like that. I know in England, Cowpole is the equivalent. Tastes yummy, babies love it. Um, but a homeopathic option that we have been using instead that I think is really, really effective is Camellia. Um, and when she's been teething or um, just very fussy, um, I don't use it often. I'm not an advocate of shoving medicine down your baby's throat if you can avoid it, but there are times when it's necessary and they need something to help them out. So Camellia is a brilliant homeopathic remedy um, that for us has worked wonders. Um, you can also get travel size baby products. Again, we don't use a lot for Honor, um, but Honest Company actually do this handmade soap. Um, and they also do really good um, hand sanitizers that aren't packed with horrible chemicals. So those are great and really small and I always keep one on hand with me. And then, um, depending on where you're going, if it's somewhere hot, Baby Bum is a really lovely uh, beauty brand for, well, I say beauty brand, a body brand for babies. And this is their um, SPF 50 and it's water resistant. So if you are going somewhere with a pool, I really like that one. Um, remember to test it out on a bit of their skin first, just to see if they do have a reaction to it. And same with the pool. Um, we were really careful because she has got sensitive skin. We kind of dipped her feet in um, for the first day and just saw if anything happened or not. The other thing about going through the airport is I think it's easy easier to wear your baby, quite literally. So take one of those slings. Um, I just think you've got your hands free that way and a lot of airports don't even make you take the baby out for security. Some of them do, they did at Heathrow. Um, but it's just a lot easier than trying to put together a pram um, or a push chair at the time. Also take a blanket, forgot to say that because I find that planes are always freezing. So even if you're going from somewhere hot to somewhere else hot, the plane could be chilly. If you want them to sleep, they need to be snuggly. I also got the advice to take a diaper for every hour of the flight and then a couple of extra because you really don't want to run out of those during the flight and they're so light that if you end up with loads of extras, that's fine. Um, I didn't want to kind of be asking other passengers if they had a spare diaper, to be honest. Um, food, we took extra. Um, you're allowed to take 
um, mother's milk and formula as much as you want through security, they just might test it. And I don't think they even did that, did test it with us. Um, so that's good. And we also took foods because by the time we came back from England, she was on solids, um, a couple of spoons, anything that you would have to sanitize normally, you just need to take an extra one of. So double up on your bottles and all that stuff. I also just took extra amounts in case there was a delay or we got diverted or anything happened like that. You just don't want to be running out of food and drink and having a hungry baby on your hands. I also got given the advice, I think by you guys actually, my followers, to um, feed on a, when you're taking off and landing and that really helps with the pressure on their ears and it worked an absolute treat. Um, another, I'll add on to that and say don't start feeding them until you really are about to take off because often, which happened at Heathrow, we were taxiing on the runway and I thought right okay I'll start feeding her now and then it was a good 20 minutes before we were ready to take off because we were in a big line of different planes. So just make sure that you really hear the engines revving up and you're ready. Um, otherwise a pacifier works well just as long as they're sucking on something it can really help clear their ears because that can be very painful for them. Um, boring stuff you do need a passport for your baby if they're traveling internationally so make sure you've got that figured out a birth certificate isn't enough uh, domestically a birth certificate is enough um, and then make sure that the whole family is covered um, with travel insurance and medical insurance wherever you're going and it would it is a good idea I think if you're staying somewhere uh, more than a few days just to find out where the local ER is or hospital or doctors just in case knock on wood you don't need it um, and then local nannies and babysitters when we were back in England we were still working so um, I actually asked some of my girlfriends who lived there for nanny recommendations and we got some great people to come part-time and help out with honor so that was brilliant but a lot of hotels have that service too um, and you can always ask for references and look people up on social media just to check them out um, and I would always settle them in for at least an hour before or half an hour if you're going out for dinner just so that the baby gets used to this new person as well as you of course that's up to you as a mummy or a daddy jet lag I don't want to scare you, but we did have a nightmare with Honor. Um, some people said it would be three days and it was more like two weeks. It's an uh, eight hour time difference going to the UK from LA, um, which is a huge shift for her. The tips I would use moving forward is that you can start to adjust their schedule a few days before you leave or up to a week before you leave and just incrementally make bedtime earlier or later. Um, if you're able to do that, I think it helps. Otherwise, just ease them slowly into their new routine. You know, try and get them down for naps um, at roughly the right time, but you have to be gentle with the schedule. And I think be prepared to be up playing with them for an hour or so in the middle of the night because there are times when, well, she would wake up and was just wide awake and was nowhere near going back to sleep. There wasn't gonna be any shushing and jiggling that was gonna work. So you just kind of have to switch the light on, low light, and um, play with them for a little bit until they get tired out again. Um, jet lag also throws off their hunger patterns, as it does in an adult. You might wake up at 4 a.m. starving, and that's exactly the same for the baby. So even if you've been really strict at getting on a schedule, um, jet lag throws that out the window. So you do need to be prepared to feed them again in the night and just kind of follow their lead. Um, I was also supplement breastfeeding and supplementing so um, and it completely threw off my um, breast milk production which took me a few days to realize so I was pumping not very much and then Honor would be not satisfied and needing more formula um, and that was a real juggling act that I hadn't really registered that the time difference would mess up my um, whole breastfeeding flow um, so and actually I had a friend of mine who it messed her up so much she had to stop breastfeeding in the end so make sure that if you're pumping you try and sort of keep schedule or feed them on 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 your old schedule as it were um and one and the things that can help your milk production um stay up is just drinking loads and loads of water um if you can say you're away without the baby for a business trip which i was when honor was only three months old there's a different video where, that I filmed for that on my YouTube channel when I was in Italy. I actually stayed on her feeding schedule and pumped 24 hours a day um, through that because I didn't want my body to get thrown off. Um, so it is something that's worth doing some research in with regards to breastfeeding. Okay, cribs. 
Um, cops. When you go to a hotel, they will of course provide you with one. Um, and I did get given the advice to take the sheet unwashed sheet from your baby's cot um, and take it with you to put it on the hotel uh, cot because then they will feel like they're still at home from the smell. Definitely take the sound machine that you use um, at home. We have a wave machine that lulls honor to sleep every night and we take that with us or if you don't have room for it you can actually get those apps on your phone and you can play the same uh, wave sounds on that too. Um, the other thing that we found on Amazon were some blackout blinds that you can actually take, they've got little suction clippers that you can put on any window so those are amazing if you're staying at a friend's house or a hotel. Um, and then last but not least my bestie in London arrived with her two little ones and she had both of their cribs um, over her shoulder. These are amazing. It's Baby Bjorn, which is a great baby brand. And literally, that's it. It's pretty lightweight. There's a strap that goes over your shoulder and that is the crib. It literally snaps into place. The mattress is in there too. So I highly recommend that for traveling. I think the last thing would be, um, you know, you've traveled for a reason, you're trying to have fun, and so I would get very worried if Honor didn't nap for long enough and I felt like she wasn't getting enough sleep. And Mackenzie, as usual, was the more laid back one who quite rightly was like, let's just enjoy, we will figure this out, she's gonna be all right. Not every baby sleeps the exact amount of time that it should every single day. Um, and she was still bright and happy in her demeanor. So I think try not to force it too much. Enjoy your, enjoy where you are, you know, if the baby comes out for dinner with you, uh, that that's great. You've got to do what you gotta do. Um, and, um, sorry, just one last thing. Um, but at the same time, don't overbook yourself. I know that I made too many social plans at the beginning in England and ended up cancelling on people because um, we were all just a bit exhausted. So give yourself a little bit of breathing room as a family to adjust and then have the best trip ever. Good luck guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, please leave me any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do.